Welcome to today's Algebra 1 EOC review for the state of Texas. We're going to be looking at reporting category number one today. I'm going to be working through problems from the 2017 version of the Algebra 1 EOC, giving you little tips and strategies, and just really working our way through the problems so you can see a really good way to approach a lot of these questions. So 2017 version is today. So in this handout that I've got, which you can download on my Teachers Pay Teachers site, it just has the standards for the reporting category number one for the Algebra 1 EOC. I've also got a big strategy that we're going to be using today for the EOC, and that is when you see the word equivalent, we're going to store in the number 2 for the value of x. So that's the little trick that we're going to be doing today. I am going to be solving these problems algebraically, but here's a little calculator strategy if you've struggled with algebra this year. So if you're looking at a TI-84 calculator, how do you store in the number 2 for x? Well, you're going to press the 2 button. Then you're going to press this button above the on key. It looks like stow. That means store. Then you're going to type in X and then enter. And it'll look like this. 2, stow, X. And when you press enter, there will be a 2 right there. So I've gonna, I'm going to attach a little video for if you have a TI Inspire for how to store numbers in for X. Now, another little strategy is if you would like to store in a value for a variable other than x, there are obviously green letters above each number. So if you wanted to store in, say, the value 2, or let's say the value 3 for negative c, I'm sorry, the value negative 3 for c, I would type in negative 3, then I would type in sto for store, and then alpha program then I would press enter and that would store in the number negative 3 for C. Now once you do this on a problem it's really important to reset your calculator because there will be a value stored in for X. So how do we reset our calculator? Second, second plus 712. That's how we reset our calculator. So sometimes if you think that your calculator is just doing something funny, just reset it and then redo the problem. All right, let's get started here. Algebra 1 reporting category number 1. Which expression is equivalent to? Equivalent. So equivalent to, if I just type in the square root of 147 on my calculator, I get 12.124. And then if I type in all of these answer choices, I'll get 7.937 for this one. I'll get 12.124 for B. I'll get 55.560 for C. And I'll get 84.870 for D. Which one is equivalent? Which one is the same? Obviously, it's answer choice B. Now, how do we simplify this algebraically? we find the biggest perfect square that goes into the square root, or that goes into 147. The biggest perfect square that goes into 147 is 49. So this is how I taught this in my class. I'm going to rewrite the square root of seven, 147 as the square root of 49 times the square root of 3. What is the square root of 49? It's 7. 7 times the square root of 3 just looks like this. 7 square roots of 3, or 7 root 3. So that's how to do it algebraically. You might have been taught to do the prime factorization of 147 and then pull out your numbers that way, and that's totally fine. All right, let's move on to number six. So as you can see, these little boxes to the right, that just tells you the teak, the standard, and they're all different colors. So you'll see ones that will repeat themselves. Those are obviously standards that are more heavily tested. On number six, it says the area of a rectangle, oops, let me underline that, it's not letting me, of a rectangle is 54x to the 9th, y to the 8th square yards. 
If the length of the rectangle is 6x to the third y to the fourth yards, which expression represents the width of the rectangle in yards? So I've got a rectangle here. I'm given the area, I'm given the length, and I'm asked to find the width. So draw a picture if you need to. I know the area of a rectangle is length times the width, which means the area divided by the length is going to be the width. So if I plug in my values, the area of the rectangle is 54, x to the 9th, y to the 8th, and the length is 6x cubed, y to the 4th. What's the width? Well, let's divide. At this point, we need to apply our quotient rule, our exponent rule that is the quotient rule. So refer to your formula chart. But what I like to say, the very first thing you need to do is look at your numbers. Look at your numbers first. 54 divided by 6 is what? It's 9. So which two answer choices could you eliminate? G and J. So even if you don't know how to do anything else from this point forward, you've now increased your chances from getting the answer right from 25% to 50%. You have better odds. But if we apply our quotient rule, then we know that we need to subtract our exponents. So 9 minus 3 is 6, and 8 minus 4 is 4. So 9 times x to the power of 6 and y to the power of 4, your answer is h. All right, let's move on. Number 13. A shoe company is going to close one of its two stores and combine all the inventory from both stores. These polynomials represent the inventory in each store. Which expression represents the combined inventory of the two stores? What does that mean to combine? It means to add. So we need to set up this expression. I'm going to add store A, which is 1 half G squared plus 7 over 2. I'm going to add that to 3g squared minus 4 fifths g plus 1 fourth. How can we add? We must first identify like terms and then combine those like terms. Terms must be alike to combine them. If they're not alike, can you combine them? No. So I'm going to do the highest exponent first. And I've got 1 half g squared and 3 g squared. When I add them, what do I get? 3 and 1 half g squared. Well, do you see that anywhere? Do you see 3 and 1 half g squared? You don't. But if I convert this mixed number to an improper fraction, I get 7 over 2. So 7 over 2 g squared. And I can't eliminate any answer choices at this point. So how can you make sure that those are the same values? You can plug in 3 and 1 half into your calculator, and then you can plug 7 over 2 into your calculator, and you'll get 3.5 for both answers. Okay, let's go to the next one. Oh, I'm going to change colors here. So now, what's my other term that I can combine? Well, it's negative 4 over 5g, and I actually can't combine that with anything, so I'm just going to plug that in. Minus 4 over 5 times g. And then which answer choices can I eliminate at this point? Well, this has a plus 4 over 5g, so it's not going to be c. And this has a plus 4 over 5g, so it's not going to be d. But I can't eliminate any other thing at this point, so let's keep moving along. So now I'm going to add 7 over 2 plus 1 over 4, and I can plug that into my calculator. Just make sure you're plugging in your fractions correctly. You can do that alpha y equals on your calculator and plug it in exactly as it looks. Or I always say if you plug in a fraction, um, make sure that you put them in parentheses. So 7 over 2 in parentheses plus 1 over 4 in its own set of parentheses. But if I'm doing 7 over 2 plus 1 over 4, that's 14 over 4 plus 1 over 4. I just created an equivalent fraction with the common denominator and that's 15 over 4. So that's how to do that without a calculator, but this kind of stuff should really no be a no-brainer if you have a calculator. So my answer in this case is A. All right,
right, let's move on. I love these problems. Which expression is equivalent to? This is going to be one of my first little tips. If you see equivalent, we're going to store in 2 for x. So if you want, go ahead and plug in 2 into your calculator. Store, it in, store 2 in for x. And then once you store it in for x, then just type in this exactly as you see it on your home screen. 6x squared plus 13x plus 5. Go ahead and do that now. And what do you get? If you'd like to pause this video and go ahead and do that, you can. But you'll get 55. Then go through each of these answer choices and determine which one will also give you 55. It's C which means that's the one that's equivalent. Every other answer choice will not give you an answer of 55, okay? So let's do this without a calculator because I'd like to show you the algebraic version since I am an algebra teacher. So obviously we have 6x squared plus 13x plus 5. We have a trinomial where a is not 1. So I'm going to use the slip and slide method, also called slide and divide. I multiply 6 times 5. I'm finding two numbers when multiplied together give me 30, when added together give me 13. Those two numbers are 10 and 3. And then that number that I multiplied in, I'm going to divide it out and I'm going to simplify each fraction. If you would really like to know how to do this, you can refer to my lesson over factoring trinomials when a is not 1. And then I'm going to slide that denominator back into the first term and write my factors. So I just did that algebraically and I also showed you the calculator version. So let's move on to number 20. The expression x to the third times x to the negative 17th is equivalent to x to the power of n. What is the value of n? Okay, this is one of those free response questions and there's no way around it. There is no trick here. No trick. You have to just know your exponent rules. Which are also on your formula chart, which tells you when you are multiplying, which you're doing here, you add your exponent. So if I have x to the power of 3 times x to the power of negative 17, and I add my exponents, if you're using your calculator, you would type in 3 minus 17 or 3 plus negative 17. But I like to tell my students who just really rely on that calculator because they've struggled with algebra all year to type in exactly what you see, 3 minus 17, and you'll get negative 14. So what is that exponent? It's negative 14. This is the value of n. So what do you plug or what do you bubble in on your test? It's going to look like this. You've got your plus and your minus over here. So what am I going to bubble in? I'm going to bubble in negative, and I just tell my students to do this. Just write your number starting to the left, negative 14. Okay, let's look at number 22. A sequence can be generated by using a sub n equals 4 times a sub n minus 1, where a sub 1 equals 6 and n is a whole number greater than 1. What are the first four terms in the sequence? Okay, I find a lot of students really struggle with these sequence problems on the Algebra 1 EOC, so I'm just going to tell you. This a sub n minus 1 just means the previous term, okay? I should say the previous term's value. Right? So what are we doing in this case? Every previous term, we're going to be multiplying by 4. Every previous term. And then this right here, a sub 1, that means our first term, the value is 6. So every first term in all my answer choices are 6. I can't eliminate any. But I'm going to multiply each previous term times 4. Well, 6 times 4 is 24. 24 times 4 is 96. 
96 times 4 is 384. F is my answer. So it's all about just interpreting what you're given right here. And A sub N minus 1 just means the previous term. So the term right before it. So if we're starting with 6, the term right before it, we're multiplying by 4. Okay. All right, number 28. Oh, another one. Which expression is equivalent to? So what's that little trick? We could store in 2 for x. We could store in 2 for x. And when I do that, and then I type in this just like I see it on my home screen, if you'd like to pause the video now and practice it yourself, I would suggest it. When I plug it in, I get negative 52. So pause the video again and go through your answer choices and see which answer choice also gives you negative 52. It's F. So obviously, I have to do this algebraically because I'm an algebra teacher. That's the calculator version. But if I'm going to solve this algebraically, I need two numbers that when multiplied together give me negative 30. And the sum of those numbers will be negative 13. Well, that's negative 15 and positive 2 because negative 15 times 2 is negative 30. And negative 15 plus 2 is negative 13. All right, we are rocking and rolling through reporting category number one of the 2017 version of the Algebra 1 EOC. 38, I love these questions. Which table does not show y as a function of x? Remember, if it's a function, what cannot repeat? X is. X values can't repeat. Well, I'm looking for the one that is not a function, which means what? I'm going to have some repeating x values. So let's see. I don't have any repeating x values on f. I don't have any repeating x values on g. What do you notice about h? I have a repeating x value, not a function. Super easy question. It's just about making sure you're looking back and saying, what is the question asking me? This question is asking me which one is not a function. Number 41, which expression is a factor of? Uh-oh, I don't have the equivalent word in my problem. I don't have two factors. There's no trick here. You just have to know how to factor. You just have to know how to factor. So this is one of those that I have a trinomial. I can't factor out a GCF. I'm always going to look for a GCF first. I can't. So I'm going to use that slip and slide or slide and divide method where I multiply A times C and rewrite it. Again, this would be a good time to go look at that video where I am factoring a slip and slide trinomial or a trinomial when A is not 1. So now I need two numbers. When multiplied together, give me 36. And when added together, give me negative 15. What are those two numbers? Negative 12 and negative 3. So I've got my two numbers, but that number that I multiplied in, I need to now divide out. And now I'm going to simplify those fractions. 12 over 18 simplifies to 2 over 3, common factor of 6. Slide that back into my first term. 3 over 18 simplifies to 1 over 6. Slide that back into my first term. 3x minus 2 times 6x minus 1. Which of those is an answer choice? A, 3x minus 2. All right, let's move on. Number 47. If p of x equals 5 times x squared plus 1 plus 16, what is the value of p of 11? There is always one question like this on the Algebra 1 EOC, and it's super duper easy. You have to get these right. You have to just know this. What is it asking? It, it's asking, what is y when x is 11? So plug in 11 for x. p of 11 
equals 5 times 11 squared plus 1 plus 16. And when I solve this out, 11 squared plus 1 is 122. 122 times 5 is 610. 610 plus 16 is 626. Okay, so that's the algebraic way to do it. If you're going to go into honors or take on pre-calculus or calculus, you should know how to do that. If you're just struggling to get through Algebra 1, here's your little strategy. Anytime you see P of X equals in your problem or Y equals in your problem, plug it into Y equals. Anytime you see that, plug in your equation into Y equals on your calculator. Okay, that's a really good place to start. Then let's go from there. If you know P of 11 means what is Y when X is 11, look at your table of values. Look at your table of values. Go to your table of values. Scroll down to when X is 11 and guess what you'll see? 626 for Y. So let's move on to the last problem. From the 2017 version of the Algebra 1 EOC reporting category number one, which expression is equivalent? Here's yet our third, maybe fourth problem. I can't even remember where we see the word equivalent and we could store in two for the value of X. And then you, if you're relying on your calculator for this EOC, you need to be very good at plugging things into your calculator exactly as they are. Seven times X and then carrot three. Then you have to arrow out. Make sure right here you arrow out of your calculator. Put a big parenthesis here. Then raise to the power of two again. Then arrow out again. If not, you're going to get a little bitty bitty parentheses in your calculator. So if you want to practice doing that now, go ahead and store in two for the value of X. And then try to do this one on your own. So I would encourage you to, to pause this video and try it on your own. I'm actually going to um, solve this algebraically. So the first thing I notice is I have these exponents right outside of my parentheses, which means I'm going to be applying the power rule to my exponents. But a lot of students forget 7 is also being raised to the power of 2. Your power rule tells me that you multiply your exponents. So a lot of students want to multiply the big numbers. 7 times 2, 14. And guess what? Those are answer choices. Those are not the answers. This is saying 7 squared, which is 49. If you can remember to do that, you can automatically eliminate those answers. So 49 times x to the power of, what do I do with my exponents? Multiply them. 3 times 2 is 6 times, what do I do with my exponents here? Also multiply. 8 times 1 half is 4. And now I'm going to apply my product rule, which tells me that I add my exponents. So 49 times x to the power of 6 plus 4, which is 10. And your answer is B. But again, if you super duper duper struggle with that, plug it into your calculator in which you would have gotten 50,176 when you plug that in. And then if you plugged in 49x to the 10th, you would have gotten 50,176. That's when 2 is stored in for x. Okay, all right, so this concludes your review for reporting category number one of the 2017 version of the Algebra 1 EOC for the state of Texas. I hope it was helpful.